Join us right now, Stephanie Link, Hightower Chief Investment Officer, of course, a CNBC contributor. Steph, um, three to three points on the Dow this morning. You think that's a that's a Scott Besson trade? Is that the Besson bump? <laughs> Uh, it could be, um, but I, I think we're just in a seasonally very strong period between now and the end of the year. And, Andrew, just think about all the things that we just went through in the last three weeks. We went through the elections where we actually got an answer because most people thought we wouldn't. We had a Fed cut. We had China stimulus. We had a little bit warmer inflation. We had geopolitical issues get uh, the tensions increase. And yet we had an Atlanta Fed tracker GDP number. The most latest number is at 2.6%. And oh, by the way, the S&P 500 is up 3.9% in that period of time. So we got through a lot of stuff. And I think that there was a lot of un unknowns and uncertainties. And now we know those things. And that's a good thing. And I think that is uh, setting us up, up well between now and the end of the year for a continued rally. Steph, but th that, would be the, that would be the bullish case and that would be the, the equities case. The bond market, yes. I think, might be flashing red. I would argue the... The oil market would tell you we're in, we're in a recession or something is happening. I mean, there's sort of these very interesting cross currents right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think the fixed income market is actually telling you that we are going to see a little bit higher growth under the Trump administration. Uh, and by the way, as I mentioned, we're already seeing pretty good growth. 2.6% is well above trend. But I think the bond market's also saying, well, if you have that better growth, you're going to have a little bit more inflation. And we are seeing a little bit higher inflation. And when we look at core piece, uh, CPI and PPI uh, uh, last week or two weeks ago, that was actually with the, uh, three handles. So it was pretty elevated. I don't I don't think we're at runaway inflation, Andrew, but I think we're probably going to, we're going to see a little bit higher inflation. Um, the oil market, I think that's a function of China, to be honest with you. And we got the China stimulus, so that should actually hopefully stabilize the, the oil market. But we have to see what's going to happen under the Trump administration as well. And, and, and maybe that's what the market is, is looking uh, forward oh, at so, in that uh, in So that given how market. far the market has run, just even the past month yeah. and a half, two months now, how much more does it have to run? Does it have to run? Is there a, uh, you know, is there a pullback? And, and if so, what are you buying? I mean, I think there's always a chance of a pullback, and we're up 25% year-to-date. The long-term total return average is 7.7% for the, for the S&P 500. It's about 3% in the fixed income market. So we're well above what the average is. So sure, we can see a pullback, but... I don't really see one between now and the end of the year. We have $6.4 trillion of money in money markets, cash and money markets uh, at this point in time. I don't think it's all going to come into the equity market, but I think that there is that fear of missing out. And I think you could see that happen. And I think at the end of the day, the most important thing, if you have about a two, two and a half percent economy, you're growing mid single digits in revenues and you're growing probably something like eight to 10 percent in earnings because you have that margin lift as well. Um, so what do I like? I like the consumer. I thought we got some really good data last week. Target notwithstanding, that was the outlier. But Walmart, we had good numbers from Amazon in the retail world. Costco, the off-pricers, they're telling you that the consumer is continuing to spend, and that's good. And then on the manufacturing side, we've been talking all year long about AI, data center, power grid. I think you want to own Freeport McMoran uh, because on the copper side, if you're going to build out the grid, you're going to need that. Uh, you're going to need copper for sure. Um, you also had a, uh, a call last week on an analyst day from Rock well automation and they're talking about 1.8 trillion dollars of mega projects around the world and only 16 percent of those have started so think about that trend and that's a, a decade-long theme in my mind